Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to Super Fun Sunday. Today we are going to look at Mark Silvestri, black and white, Wolverine. Um, lots of requests for Mark lately. Uh, one thing that I thought was kind of cool about this stuff is not only is it in black and white, which kind of um, celebrates Inktober, uh, it, it's monthly work. And uh, we've been talking about monthly work and, and how people sort of... Um, approach that and uh these books are great i, I have the Buscema one also which is a yellow covered one but uh we're going to focus on mark today but you know mark is sort of the son of Buscema <laughs> in a way other influences too but definitely um there's some really really great john Buscema uh, in particular in these books and uh, i did order the x-men one um you know I, I was really trying to rack my brain without researching it, and I'm not 100% sure if Mark did his X-Men stuff. The un, I think it was Uncanny X-Men, or maybe it was just X-Men at the time, um, before this or after this. So if you know, let me know in the comments below. But uh, yes, yeah, so let's start with this book. Um, so this is a Mark piece right here. There are other artists in the book, so we'll kind of skip around. Um, and, and, you know... I would be remiss to not mention the amazing Dan Green. His inks are phenomenal on this stuff. So uh, as we enjoy the black and white art for Inktober, let us not forget that it's a power duo. And uh, man, I would kill to see what Mark's pencils look like at this time. It would be so fun and so interesting. And not really to compare and contrast um, the pencils with the inks, but I think just generally speaking... Um, he was drawing so well. It would just be fun to see based on that alone. But yeah, Dan's just got a great, great look. So let's see. I think the first story is Gene Colon in this, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll, we'll skip that. Oh, this is going to be a little crazy. Um, all right. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move through until we get to the Mark stuff because I do want to look at the Mark stuff. So let me, this looks like Busema. So nice. Okay, so let's see here. Just give me one sec. We'll get to it. Get to the mark. This is John Buscema again. Man, so nice. These books are great. They're actually the reproductions in a lot of these is quite good, um, and uh, they're a little more expensive now than they used to be. I mean, definitely if you bought them when they first came out, um, they're a bit more affordable. But... Oh man, Th these first issues that Mark did are so good. Let's see. Okay, we'll just start here. This is one of my favorite X Men issues, too. I mean, uh, Wolverine. <laughs> Look at that cover. It's so nice. It's so good. The confidence that it takes to lay down pencils like this is so wild. And the, the fact that Dan can ink it and retain so much of the energy is just so cool. It's so freaking cool. Like, man. Oh, it's just so badass. Really difficult stuff to, I think, study from until you get a little more advanced. Um, I remember looking at some of Mark's stuff early on when I was trying to learn to draw and just like he would draw pants or like jackets and it would look like this. And it's like, if you understand folds, you can kind of, you can start to sort of combine um, more uh, obvious shapes with what he does. But, but yeah, it can look really encrypted when you see it with um, Mark because it's just so like painterly the way like he lays down like his, his, uh, his shapes so it, he's so good he's so damn good what's funny is i actually printed out one of these pages i, I scanned it like with a photocopier and i had it on my wall at wildstorm for pretty much the whole time that i was there uh, uh, at least on and off i'll show it to you when i see it it's cop sitting in a car in the rain and it was just always kind of like a little reminder to me of how much atmosphere stuff like this creates. It's so good. Man. But yeah, I ordered the essential Wolverine that 
um, we'll have the Mark stuff, but uh, it's coming uh, <laughs> media mail, which means like, don't hold your breath. It takes forever, or it can, it depends. I'm going to keep this video right at 20 minutes, so it'll be a little shorter than some of the Super Fun Sundays, but uh, my videos have been getting longer and longer, and uh, I just think it's better. I would rather do more frequent and maybe a little bit shorter and still still have a, a good length to them, you know. I think 20 minutes is good. It's like so good. Look at that. Even like this. But you could see, well, and it's interesting too, this would be a recommendation, is if you're a big fan of like someone like Mark or um, whoever, if, if they have a big enough body of work, or if at least even spans um, four or five years or six or seven years. Oh, this is the page right here. Yeah, I had this hanging on my wall forever. Um, go back to the oldest stuff. And really, really look at it and then watch their evolution and things to look out for are little aha moments for them. Like the first time that you'll see them do something. It's really, really interesting. But if if you, like, say we're a huge fan of Mark, you can go back to, like, his earliest work. And there's work that's much earlier than this. There's a whole, he did, like, um, like a House of Mystery. There's a Submariner. Uh, annual, there's some Conan issues and stuff like that. It's all still pretty good. So some of them have a little bit of a different style, but you'll you'll literally, literally see this evolve into this kind of an approach. You know, maybe at first it was just one panel that he kind of suggested more, and then all of a sudden he liked that, and you start seeing it more. It's really really interesting. I haven't done it with Mark, um, but uh, yeah, you can really kind of follow the evolution of their work and. Uh, Especially, for, I think Mark would be someone that would be pretty interesting to do it to because of the fact that it was all kind of real time doing books. So if you looked at his X-Men work, you'll see that evolution throughout it. And and you start to kind of know, you'll be able to tell like when they look rushed or when they're um, handling things certain ways. Like, like they'll be like kind of a... You'll have an awareness of what was going on. Because sometimes the page is just simple. There's no point in over over drawing uh, things that people really aren't going to spend much time on, and then and then uh, you know just because it's sparse doesn't mean it was necessarily rushed. Yeah, these these issues are so cool. There's like three in a row. I haven't read these in a long time, but I, I have actually read these stories, but it's been, man, years. It's, it's so cool that Marvel did this. So it's so, it's, they're, they're so cool. If you look, look at those lines, they're like totally open, kind of broken and stuff like that. It's very, very solid. This stuff is, he, he really knows what he's doing. And he probably like, you know, again, artists are their own best critics. Hold on, I'm going to pause this for one sec. Okay, I'm back. To let a cat out of the office. Like, I don't want to be locked in. This is too intense. <laughs> this is so good. I love this shot right here. It's like just enough detail on the car where you really get a sense of like not only motion, but you know, what like kind of model of sports car it is and, and uh, yeah, he seals the deal.
Man, that's so cool. Ping, ping. God, there's so much energy. It's funny because every week when I do one of these, I always feel like... Um, <laughs> it's like you see it and you go oh man like this is so good and then the next week it's like oh man this is so good <laughs> it just shows you that there's room for like so many different styles of like kick-ass i mean comic art we've definitely gone into other stuff but but uh, it is it's funny it's like, like it can't get better than this and then like the next week it's like something different and it's like Oh man, this is this is perfect too. <laughs> yeah, God, I, it's just crazy to me how loose he can draw, and and then Dan's inks just he he puts in you know like like the right choices. It's it's solid but still loose. That's really really neat. The girl in particular, man, that high contrast on her looks great. Um. It's funny because I still go back to, I think that like my two favorite comic book artists, it goes back and forth, but at their best, I think Mignola and Frank Miller still are kind of at the top of the stack for me. There's tons of artists that I like, but when I think of comic books and storytelling, for me, I it, it seems to originate from those guys as, as a fan. Like I, I always think that like, it still feels relevant where, where sometimes, you know, things can kind of come in out of fashion. Again, it's just my, my, uh, sort of sense of aesthetics. That's nothing to do with like the actual like, pecking order of what's right. Yeah, I really don't know Mark, and and uh, I've never I've only met him briefly, like one or two times. So it's one of those things where I don't really have a ton of insight into how he works, or you know, like much of anything. So I can only look at it as a fan of what's been published, and and you know, he doesn't really like if you ever see interviews with him. I've talked about this before. He rarely, rarely talks about art. There's a couple of videos that are short of him sort of drawing, but generally he talks about business and what sort of you know products um you know the different companies that he's working with are, are sort of involved in at the time but it, it it is a shame that there's not at least one really in-depth interview with him talking about drawing and his his career as, as an artist because it would be really really interesting but but uh i haven't really found one I can't even imagine if he did like a Twitch stream like Jim had done had done over the last like year or two and Mark was knocking out drawings like that. Oh my god. <laughs> That'd be so insane. <laughs> that would be wild. He's posting a little bit more art lately. He's posted a couple of sketches that are really, really nice. And it Apparently, he's working on that, that Batman thing that there's been sort of little teasers of over the last few years. So hopefully, I mean, at some point, that'll definitely come out, I'm sure. No idea how far along it is. There. This is cool. actually bought a few x-men pages of marks way back i think i bought like six so there was someone on ebay was selling um really kind of pedestrian pages meaning you know it'd be like someone waking up and hitting an alarm clock and walking down an elevator stuff like that kind of nothing really too you know superhero-y they were super cheap though i think they were like 30 bucks a piece or maybe 40 something like that but i, I picked up like six of them and i kept them for a while um, and then ultimately just ended up selling them because it's like they were just sitting in a closet. But um, it was fun to, to have them and see sort of the work in person. It looked like some of it maybe was marker. Like it was like kind of brush, quill, and maybe marker. Some of the um, 
you know, like ellipses and stuff like that. There was a, a nightstand had like a lamp and stuff like that. It looked like it was marker because the ink had kind of faded and turned sort of a weird color. But all this stuff is is definitely some sort of normal, well, not normal, but you know what I mean, like a like an inking tool. It, uh, Dan, I think used to. Um, I, he never really confirmed if it was Dan Green, the inker, but the, there was someone named Dan Green that would reply on my videos sometimes. So, Dan, if you're out there, hopefully you're doing well. And uh, thank you for uh, doing all this amazing work that we can enjoy. That's great. Man, that's so cool. They were such a great team. And these issues got a little more detailed as they went along, and... Uh, yeah, but I think Wolverine 50, it's got kind of a yellow die-cut cover. I mean, that's definitely almost like the precursor to the image the image look for Mark, which would lead me to believe that he probably did X-Men first and then maybe did Wolverine. That seems more, um, thinking back now, that the, the later issues of Wolverine were much closer to uh, what Mark kind of did initially on Cyberforce. Man, that's so sick. <laughs> we talked about the backhand in um, that review video. <laughs> so we're closing in on 20 minutes. Like I said, I'm just going to keep this right at 20 minutes. And uh, we can always come back to this stuff because I, I actually would love to see more. Yeah, there's a ton of these books. I probably have of the essentials, maybe 25 of these. So not the hugest collection ever, but uh, I definitely picked up a bunch. There's probably a few more that I would get. I think... That's funny. I, don't, I come across this page a lot. Uh, maybe... I don't know why. This this panel in particular and this... I might have had a photocopy of this or something. Oh, man, this is so good. Okay, so we'll, we'll look through this issue and then we'll call it a wrap. Man, that cover is great. And this is, again, Dan Green Inks. Man, that's how you knock out an airplane or an airport panel. His girls are cute, always super cute. His bad guys look bad. His heroes are heroic. He's got the archetypes really down. It's funny because that's the drift. I, I don't know. It's like the drifting Sylvester head. Like at that angle, sometimes his girls' heads will get really, really distorted. But it's kind of like his thing. It's it's only that shot. Oh, I had this. Uh, I think what it was is I went through this book so I wouldn't have to always pull out the book, and I made copies of either some of the panels or something. This was a long, long time ago, years and years back, probably when I first got the book. Um, and that's why some of the stuff looks more familiar to me than others. Oh, this thing is, yeah, oh, this page too is great. Um, like, look at her jacket. Oh, so good. This is really cool. And the lighting on the faces is just so killer. See, and that's the thing I wonder is like, so did Mark draw this really fast? Or did he just draw it loose and, and, you know, man, it would be just so interesting to see how this all went down. It looks so spontaneous. You just, you picture like he was just flying through it, but then the lighting and stuff like that actually is pretty subtle. I mean, it's, it's really, really well done, but I mean, some of the little, like, 
um, what do you call it? Like the the forms that they're that the light shadows and stuff falls on are really really like man they're quite accurate. And the fact that he was able to keep so much energy in his pencils is really impressive. And, and uh, again, a, a credit to Dan Zinks, ultimately, because that's what we kind of see it through. You know, if you gave these pages to five different inkers, I mean, they would really, really look different. And I think that um, at this time, Dan was definitely the best choice for sure. Oh man, those hands are great. Yeah, I would highly, highly recommend these. So this is essential two and three of the Wolverine. Um, one is really good too. It's it's pretty much all view semi, I think. But um, oh yeah, look at this. That's really cool too. God, the high contrast on this stuff is just perfection. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start wrapping it up here. That's a really nice shot. It's a tough little, tough little angle. Man, that's cool too. It's just all these little moments, like that that guy with the the sword back. It's such a great little drawing. This too. That's a killer shot. See, like, and this is really interesting too. Okay, so you've got this like sort of futuristic warehouse with all these like you know vats and pipes and stuff like that. But look how simple it is. He didn't overdraw it. This is how you get through a page, you know, in an efficient amount of time and and allocate your time to. And I'm not trying to convince people to do this. I'm just I'm celebrating what Mark did on this, to be clear. So there's no confusion. Like draw draw your pages any way you want. I, it's your business. I'm just saying that like like this is how he was able to spend time on what he wanted to spend time on and and um produce you know a four-week book or what, whatever who knows the who knows what the schedule was on this i know at some point on on x-men he was doing um it looked like two books a month which is really really crazy i don't even know how you can do that and i don't know how long he did it for but you can see on the cover of the books it's like now bi-monthly <laughs> this is so good I think also the experience for me as a reader looking at these is I don't ever feel shortchanged so that's important I don't I don't look at this work and and think oh he was lazy or he was rushed or he didn't give me enough information to follow the story you know i don't get that sensation so to me that's a success like his choices seem to work this is really nice it's very suggestive though you know but really good so okay have a great day we're at 24 minutes it's a long video you know most most channels don't even have videos that long so um, and we'll come back to this. And like I said, there was tons of requests from Mark. So um, he's definitely on people's minds right now, which is really, really cool. He should be. He's he's uh, he's one of my favorite comic book pencilers for sure. When I was talking about storytelling and, and thinking Frank Miller and Mignola, to me, that's a slightly different category, even though Mark obviously is a storyteller. But Mark is is easily my top five favorite comic book pencilers, just the way that he draws and his ability and... Um, skill and thought process he's he's just great so all right have a great day i'll talk to you later bye